Coming in at number 10, we have the Iron Goblin. Coming from an alternate universe where the Spider Island event wound up being permanent, Tony Stark was initially transformed into a human-spider hybrid under the control of the villainous Spider Queen. During a battle with the Resistance, however, Tony was sprayed with the same goblin formula that had corrupted the mind of Norman Osborn, transforming Tony Stark into the Iron Goblin with a mechanical new costume to match. And while this version of Tony would eventually decide to sacrifice himself in a last moment of humanity before his goblin insanity fully took over, the combination of Iron Man and Green Goblin tech is still a pretty terrifying combo that Spider-Man should hope never reappears. Coming in at number 9, we have the corrupted Iron Man from the controversial 90s event, The Crossing. When a variant of the time-traveling villain, Kang the Conqueror, known as Immortus, began using the neural link in the Iron Man suit to secretly begin all altering Tony Stark's brainwaves, Iron Man became a sleeper agent within the Avengers and eventually attacked his companions outright after secretly manipulating them for years. While eventually defeated by a time-traveling 19-year-old version of himself and then retconned into Tony going back to his usual status quo in the Marvel Universe, this controversial storyline shows what would happen if Iron Man truly turned out to be a traitor. Coming in at number 8, we have Iron Thor. During the event that saw God Emperor Doom in control of a Marvel Universe converted into a new battle world, Doom maintained his complete control over the many realms of battle world with a police force army known as the Thor Corps. One of the most powerful of Doom's personal army was the being known as Iron Thor, wearing a combination of the Iron Man armor and Thor's iconic helmet, and investigating any potential rebellions to his master Doom's rule. Even capable of wielding Mjolnir, this super powerful character still managed to be murdered by the hero Warrior Woman as an example of rebellion against Emperor Doom. He might have had a short life, but man, I really love that Iron Thor design. Coming in at number 7, we have the Steel Corpse. Hailing from Earth 11326, this version of Iron Man was pretty similar to our own, but with two key differences. He's permanently fused with his suit, and he absolutely hates mutants. Fighting alongside other villainous Avengers to wipe out this universe's X-Men, this Iron Man's natural body died long ago after being melded with his machinery, and thus he jokingly calls himself the Steel Corpse as a way of coping with his morbid situation. This version of Iron Man had complete mastery of his weaponry, as they were literally a part of his body, and only a last second change of heart before sacrificing himself stops this Tony Stark from being one of the absolute worst. Coming in at number 6, we have the infamous Iron Patriot, aka Norman Osborn. Best known as being the alter ego of Spider-Man's nemesis, the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn has long been one of the biggest threats in the Marvel Universe, manipulating events from afar as the CEO of Oscorp. Following the invasion of Earth by the Skrull army, Norman found himself suddenly in the public eye and with goodwill after being the one to personally defeat the Skrull Queen. Norman would use this influence to lead the Dark Avengers as the Iron Patriot, a twisted version of Iron Man combined with Captain America's patriotism that tricked the public into trusting Norman, and showing that Tony Stark is definitely not the worst billionaire in the Marvel world. Coming in at number 5, we have the Iron Maniac. On the dark alternate world of Earth 5012, most of the superheroes of this reality are dead after an unknown fatal error made by Reed Richards. A vengeful and violent Tony Stark makes it his life's mission to get revenge on Reed and modifies his armor to resemble that of Reed's worst enemy, Doctor Doom. This insane version of Iron Man killed the Human Torch and was eventually banished to the main Marvel Universe where he had to be subdued by the combined efforts of Spider-Man Captain America, and Black Widow, who found it a bit unnerving to be fighting such a far-gone version of one of their closest allies. This Tony was just as resourceful as the real one, however, as he'd even escaped custody by building a new suit from the remains of a life model decoy. Pretty resourceful for an insane Iron Man. Coming in at number 4, we have the Superior Iron Man. 
During an event known as Axis, many Marvel heroes and villains had their morality completely inverted, with good guys becoming bad, bad guys becoming good, and so on and so forth. One of the few changes that wasn't reversed by the end of the event, however, was the morality of Iron Man, who in his evil form still possessed all of the intelligence and dark aspects of Tony's personality, and managed to build a shield for himself to prevent being turned into a hero again infecting much of the planet with a new version of the Extremis virus, and using artificially intelligent drones to assert his dominance, this version of Tony was only finally cured by the Marvel Universe's collapse into battle world resetting his morals, meaning that this was a villain that the rest of the Avengers didn't even manage to properly defeat. Coming in at number three, we have Obadiah Stane, aka the Iron Monger in the very first Iron Man film. It's become a bit of a meme at this point, that many of the supervillains of the MCU are dark reflections of the same powers and personalities as the heroes they're opposing, and the Iron Monger is the origin of that trope in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Completely guilt-free about selling weapons to all sides, Stain is a ruthless businessman willing to do anything to maintain control of Stark Industries, and shows just how awful Tony's new technology could be used in the wrong hands, and what a monster he could become if he gave up on his deepest morals. Although, honestly, the fact that his idea of upgrading the Iron Man suit is just to make the original one bigger, maybe he's not quite as smart as Tony after all. Coming in at number two, we have the evil Emperor Stark. Hailing from the destroyed world of Earth 42777, this version of Iron Man was perhaps the cruelest the multiverse had ever seen, as he manipulated Magneto and the Brotherhood of Mutants into declaring war on humanity, then used the resulting anti-mutant backlash to secure power as the world's only superhero. Holding entire countries hostage with natural disasters and even spreading plagues among his own citizens, this version of Tony declared himself Emperor Stark, taking the cloak of Doctor Doom as a final trophy. This was Iron Man at his most evil, and he was an incredibly powerful threat when encountered by the multiverse-traveling Exiles, only eventually defeated by his own universe's last superhero survivor, Sue Storm. A tragic end for a tragic villain. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we have Zombie Iron Man. When Earth-2149 was first hit by the zombie plague that's since been highlighted in multiple Marvel spin-off series, this version of Iron Man attempted to use teleportation technology to escape to a different universe with Nick Fury. However, a zombified Fantastic Four arrived too quickly for this plan, and Tony was bitten, becoming a living corpse inside his metal armor and developing a bloodlust and pure hunger for human flesh. Still surviving even after having his legs blasted off by the Silver Surfer, the zombified Iron Man would go on to lead the rest of the undead heroes and villains in an attack against Galactus and gain this universe's power cosmic, meaning he could now pursue more flesh throughout the entire universe and bring the zombie plague to the rest of the doomed cosmos. Number 10, Jonathan Walker. US agent might be a hero now in the comics, but when he started out in the 616 continuity, he was manipulated into becoming a villain. Jonathan Walker was initially known as antagonistic hero Super Patriot, who did his best to discredit Captain America, claiming that he himself stood for the United States' true ideals. As a result of Red Skull's meddling and manipulation, he was appointed to replace Steve Rogers as the new Captain America after Rogers stepped down as the government actually owned the title and refused to let him keep the title if he wasn't going to be working for them. As Captain America, Walker took a very extreme and violent approach that put him into direct conflict with Rogers, who was currently going by the mantle of the Captain. In the end, the Captain defeated Walker, and after Skull's involvement in the ordeal was revealed, the two ended up teaming up to take him down, starting off on Walker's path to redemption as hero US agent. Number 9, Cap Wolf. Werewolf Captain America isn't as much an alternate version of Cap as it is a distinct moment in Cap's history where he happened to be transformed into a werewolf. Captain America ends up becoming a werewolf while on the trail of Colonel John Jameson, who had gone missing. 
Captain America himself had reason to suspect that something awful had happened to Jameson, who had seemed maybe plagued by his wolf side once more. Jameson was known in the past for operating as Man Wolf. It seemed as though a wolf like creature or werewolf was responsible for a series of murders. In the end, however, Cap's trail ended up leading him into a much more complex and disturbing plot where a villain was attempting to use a recreated werewolf by night wolf serum to turn people into werewolves. Captain America became one of their victims and for a time became a werewolf himself. Granted, he was still a hero at this point, but werewolves in general are considered to be somewhat uncontrollable monsters who are at least occasionally ruled by their own bloodlust. So I think we can at least partially count Cap Wolf. Also, I needed to complete the monster trifecta. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Captain America lists, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8. MCU US Agents In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, US Agent John Walker accidentally becomes an evil version of Captain America without really intending to do that. Really, it's more complicated than him just being straight up evil as it is with most Marvel Cinematic Universe antagonists. Walker really wants to do right by the Captain America mantle and do it justice. He's a soldier who has worked super hard to earn this title, but also, although his heart might be in the right place, that doesn't mean that he knows the best way to approach replacing Cap or doing right by his legacy. Walker ends up becoming misguided as a result of dealing with so much disrespect from those around him, and as a result of him not being you know, as powerful as Cap would be because he doesn't have the super soldier serum. He realizes that being chosen and respected as the new Captain America by the government doesn't necessarily mean that the people of the United States will also respect you, nor that Steve's actual allies and friends will respect you as his replacement either. After he loses his own best friend, Lamar Hoskins, he becomes completely fed up with trying to figure out how to do what's right and instead decides to do what he feels needs to be done. This makes him much more violent and much more dangerous, turning him into an enemy of Falcon and Winter Soldier and leading the government to later on remove his title, his honors, and basically just overall dismiss him. Fortunately, the US agent still found a place on what will likely be either the MCU Thunderbolts or Dark Avengers team. TBD. Or at least to be declared, if not to be determined. Number 7. Mutant Captain America This version of Captain America was a mutant who ended up replacing the original Captain America after he died in a sentinel attack. He wasn't just given the mantle of Cap either, but also ended up receiving the super soldier serum. He had this and his own mutant powers besides, which made him pretty crazy powerful. Although the mutant version of Cap had good intentions, his powers were somewhat uncontrollable, which was a big problem. His powers going haywire was what ended up causing the death of his own group, the Six, and the Avengers, who he was at the time fighting against. This caused him to lose his sanity, turning him into a full-on villain and a loose cannon, who attacked and defeated pretty much everyone who came after him. Except Havoc, who managed to successfully kill and defeat the crazed mutant version of Captain America. Poor mutant Captain America, it sounds like it was a rough go, you know? Number 6. Zombie Colonel America What's worse than a werewolf cap? A zombie cap, obviously. This is the version of Captain America that we get in the Marvel zombie first. Although really, this isn't Captain America as a zombie, it's Colonel America, because that is Steve Rogers' hero mantle in this reality. Here, Colonel America was infected and turned into a zombie during that first confrontation with the zombified Sentry, which the Avengers responded to in downtown New York. Zombie Cap was responsible for turning Spider-Man into a zombie, biting him after he himself was infected. He was one of the zombies to fight against the villains for who should get the remains of Galactus's corpse, and of course with it, the power cosmic, which would enable them to travel to other worlds, which they then could devour. However, Zombie Cap was defeated by his nemesis, a zombified Red Skull. So, no power cosmic for him. He dead. He, he's double dead. Really. Number 5. William Burnside William Burnside was the Captain America of the 1950s, who ended up being retconned to not actually be Steve Rogers at all, although he was a man who believed he was Steve Rogers. This version of Captain America was later revealed to be William Burnside initially, a man who was hired to replace Captain America 
after he went missing in World War II. This version of Captain America was racist and extremely anti-communist, echoing the McCarthy communist witch hunts of those times. Burnside illegally changed his name to Stephen Rogers and would have an extended lifespan thanks to a version of the super soldier serum that he was exposed to. However, because this was not a perfected version of the serum, it apparently would also cause him to become more extreme over time as his psyche and mind degraded as a result. So made him pretty crazy and pretty evil. Number four, evil clone. An evil clone with the mind of Red Skull. To be honest, this has happened multiple times in the comics, where Red Skull has ended up having his consciousness, his personality, or his memories, or some combination of those, into the clone of Steve Rogers. It's happened both in the main continuity and in alternate universes. For this version, though, we're gonna be talking about issue 350 of Captain America, where the Red Skull in Steven Rogers' clone body ends up being the mastermind behind the whole commission slash Walker kerfuffle that we talked about earlier on on this list. His plan this time around in a Steve Rogers' clone body is to discard his previous ideologies and use capitalism itself to dismantle the democracy of America and destroy the nation from the inside out. It doesn't work out in the end and the issue ends with him facing off against both John Walker and the captain and becoming deformed once more by the red dust of death. But he did try it. He did try. And don't worry, he would come back in um, more clone bodies. That's how he do. Number three, Vampire King. This version of Captain America comes from the Exile series where he becomes King of the Vampires. In the alternate reality of Earth 3931 during World War II by Baron Blood. Baron Blood turns him into a vampire. Vampire Cap is definitely not a good dude, likely the most evil of all the monsters Captain America is listed here. This version of Captain America has his own sinister version of the Avengers and Thralls, who he enlists and forces to fight for him. However, he still proves to be no match for the Exiles, who end up defeating and decapitating him in the end. Number 2, President Red Skull. Not an alternate version of Steve Rogers, but an alternate version of Red Skull who beat Rogers and took to wearing his Captain America suit off and around his new redecorated Oval Office. This alternate version of Red Skull comes from the Old Man Logan universe where Red Skull ends up appointing himself the new president of the US, which he renames America. America with a K. Red Skull ends up not just defeating Captain America, but also almost all of the superhero community when he manages to rally together an impossible to defeat force of supervillains who coordinate their attack on the nation. Being that he's Red Skull, he's probably one of the most evil versions of Captain America out there because he's Red Skull. Although, like I said, he's not fully a Cap alt really, but he definitely evil, so. And he does wear that suit a lot. Number one, Hydra Supreme. This alternate version of Captain America was initially retconned to be the version of Captain America. Steven Rogers ended up being revealed as a Hydra sleeper agent in one of the biggest twists in comic book history. All his heroic actions had apparently just been Steve buying time and building trust so that he'd be in the perfect position to take over the US and could then reveal his true colors. Hail Hydra to this day is one of the most iconic lines ever uttered by the supposed hero. However, it all turned out that this version of Cap wasn't the real Steve Rogers of 616. Instead, what happened was Kobik, the sentient living version of the Cosmic Cube, was convinced by Red Skull that reality should be warped so that Cap could become an agent of Hydra. When this happened, the real heroic version of Captain America ended up trapped within a shard of the Cosmic Cube, and the now altered version of the character took his place in the reality of 616. In the end, the true Cap would be freed from the shard and would end up fighting and defeating his evil Hydra Supreme alternate version. And if you're worried, don't worry, the shard was made bigger, so it wasn't like little tiny cap running around. Coming in at number 10, we've got a video game honorable mention with the Wolverine symbiote from the game Spider-Man Web of Shadows. In this title storyline, Wolverine has traveled to New York City to deal with a growing symbiote infestation, and even briefly fights Spider-Man when he believes the wall crawler is actually Venom. Unfortunately for Wolverine, he finds himself overwhelmed by actual symbiotes on top of a church and attacks Spider-Man again as the Wolverine symbiote. With all 
all of his usual healing abilities on top of all the symbiote enhancements that the alien parasites offer, this version of Wolverine might just be one of the grossest versions we've ever gotten to see. Coming in at number 9, we have the brainwashed Wolverine of Earth 14850. At one point in the regular Marvel Universe, Wolverine was captured and brainwashed by Hydra in order to assassinate the Avengers, but luckily was able to be deprogrammed before he did any real damage. On this alternate Earth, however, the deprogramming never took place, and Wolverine's killing spree of superpowered heroes was able to last for months. Armed with all of his incredible abilities, absolutely no remorse, and the addition of Hydra-developed teleporting technology that nullified even Wolverine's usual weaknesses, and this was a horrifying enemy that even the Avengers couldn't handle. Coming in at number 8, we've got a live-action detour with X-24 from the 2017 film, Logan. An allegedly perfect clone of Wolverine, but with none of the compassion or humanity, X-24 was treated like an attack dog and followed the orders of Xander Rice to hunt down and capture the real Wolverine and the young mutant girl he was protecting. Based on Wolverine during his prime years, he was able to physically overcome the true Wolverine and was only able to be defeated at the last minute by a bullet made of pure adamantium right to the skull. Coming in at number 7, we have the vicious Vampire Lord Wolverine. In an alternate universe where vampires have launched an all-out assault on the United States, most of the X-Men are bitten and mind-controlled by the Lord of the Vampires, Dracula. Unfortunately for Dracula, however, Wolverine's healing ability allows him to regain his own mental control despite becoming a vampire, and thus is able to overthrow Dracula and become their leader. Consumed by a bloodlust that amplifies his already pretty terrifying rage, Wolverine and his vampire army are able to wipe out most other superpowered life on the planet, only finally being defeated by the combined forces of Doctor Strange and the Punisher as a vampire hunting duo. Coming in at number 6, we have the infamous Zombie Wolverine. Many superheroes and villains of the Marvel Universe found themselves infected with an undead plague on the alternate world of Earth 2149, but Wolverine might be the character who experienced the oddest side effects from becoming a member of the Zombie Legion. Initially fighting alongside Magneto to help defeat the undead threat with the X-Men, Wolverine was eventually bitten and overwhelmed while attempting to defend Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s main base of operations. Turning against Magneto, this version of Wolverine slowly discovered his healing factor was affected by his zombification, meaning his arms could no longer support the adamantium claws throughout his body. Attacking any living thing he could with the shreds that remained of his limbs, this version of Wolverine would go on to even consume Galactus, becoming a cosmic undead threat to the rest of this very doomed Marvel Universe. Coming in at number 5, we have the villainous Wolverine Wolverine of an alternate future, Saberclaw. Hailing from Earth 982, this son of Wolverine and an unknown woman absolutely hates his original father, so much so that it seems to have literally changed him into appearing more reminiscent of Sabretooth than his actual dad. Wearing adamantium sheaths on his bone claws to make them even deadlier, Saberclaw was briefly a member of this universe's Sinister Six before eventually being convinced to put his differences aside with his father and help defend the world from the threat of Galactus and the daughter of Loki. Just another day in complicated comic book family dynamics. Coming in at number 4, we have Dakin, the dark son of Wolverine. Named after the Japanese term for mongrel dog, Dakin is the tragic child that Wolverine never knew about, his mother being murdered before Wolverine even knew he had a kid. Cut from his mother's body, Dakin was raised to hate his father, and in their very first encounter, slashed open his stomach and left him to die. With the same incredible healing abilities and bone claws as his dad, Dakin has had a long road of trying to find his proper place in the world and has fought on the sides of both good and evil over the course of his tragic life, but hopefully he'll stay more on the side of good going forward. 
Coming in at number three, we have Hydra Wolverine. Hailing from the reality known as Earth 1720, this version of Wolverine is fully committed to the evil ideology of the organization Hydra, complete with a new green and yellow color scheme to his costume. Married to this universe's version of the Invisible Woman, who also happens to be this universe's version of Madame Hydra, this Wolverine was apparently successful in conquering his home reality along with his lover, and has since begun to travel the multi searching for more worlds to destroy in the universe's most twisted romantic honeymoon. Luckily for the Marvel multiverse, this Wolverine would be defeated by a variant of Kitty Pride and the rest of the Exiles who wound up tricking him into stabbing himself with his own adamantium claws. Better luck next time, Hydra. Coming in at number two, we have the Wolverine from the Age of Apocalypse universe. In an alternate world where Charles Xavier is dead and Magneto is leader of the X-Men, Wolverine is a brutal warrior named Weapon X who has to be constantly subdued by the psychic abilities of Jean Grey in order to be a functioning member of the X-Men team. Eventually losing a hand while going on a suicide mission to rescue this version of Jean from a version of Cyclops, this version of Wolverine for a time had heroic ambitions but gave them up after being granted the power of the Celestials and turned into Weapon Omega, now determined to bring about the evolutionary future that he'd initially stop the mutant apocalypse from achieving and declaring war against all of humanity. This new Weapon Omega is the farthest thing possible from Wolverine's usual heroics. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we have Brother Mutant, an evil variant of Wolverine combined with some of his greatest allies and greatest foes. On Earth-127, a male variant of the Scarlet Witch, known as the Scarlet Warlock, attempted to cast a spell that would transfer Wolverine's adamantium skeleton to Magneto, thus giving Magneto an incredible power boost given his magnetic abilities. However, something with the spell went wrong, and the Scarlet Warlock, Wolverine, Magneto, Quicksilver, and the villain Mesmero were all merged into a singular being known as Brother Mutant. All five of these mutants' powers combined into one villainous figure, Brother Mutant was such a powerful threat that a multiversal team of other, more heroic Wolverines had to be assembled specifically to stop him just to ensure that all of that power wasn't unleashed on the rest of the Marvel Multiverse.